focused on the industry. We've asked um, POTUS uh, to put significant pressure on Saudi to stop this price war. We had 13 senators meet and call the Saudi ambassador last week. Um, Pompeo, Pompeo has um, called MBS. We know that. The G20 and the G7 have both put significant pressure to stop this price war. Uh, if we don't, we're going to be importing 60% of our crude again from the Middle East. Well, what have, what, have they, what have they said? I mean, I'm sure you're dialed in. You're the only CEO, by the way, I've ever seen at an OPEC meeting. So I, I know your, your, your ear is to the ground. Have the Saudis made any explanation for what they're doing? Why suddenly this massive rift between two countries that were sort of joined at the oil hip? No, I think you, you got two personalities between MBS and Putin uh, that are fighting each other. As you know, uh, Russia's been cheating um, since last December with the condensate uh, re relaxation at the recent OPEC meeting in December. Um, and then you go into this recent meeting, uh, they wouldn't cut. They wanted to see what happens to demand. I don't blame them. At the same time, as you know, U.S. production's up 8 million barrels a day. We've added 4 million barrels a day since OPEC Plus put together their agreement in 16. Uh, I believe that one of them will blink. Uh, they both have about 500 billion of foreign reserves. Um, Saudi is estimated to be dropping about 100 billion per year. Um, Russia is somewhere in the 50 to 70 billion per year. So they will definitely blink. I don't know if it'll be three months, six months, or nine months, but something will happen. It's incredible. And by the way, when you say MBS, you're not talking about mortgage backed securities, you're talking about Mohammed bin Salman, the crown prince, the de facto ruler of Saudi Arabia. I mean, in your years in this business, Scott, have you ever seen such a destructive price war? I mean, it's OPEC was created in a sense to sort of manage the market. Ironically, OPEC has sort of become an ally to the United States if they can stabilize prices. I mean, this is just asinine on so many levels. Pardon my, no, I'm probably, I don't think I'm that's French, only, but you get my point. Yeah, Brian, I'm probably the only CEO that's still around since 1986. Most CEOs did not go through that. It reminds me of 86. It's going to take a long time to balance the market. That's why uh, Pioneer and several independents are seeking a global settlement to look at really reducing productions with all states, OPEC, OPEC plus, until the virus has ended. Uh, we've run into roadblocks. We've had opposition from Exxon, who controls API and Texoga. They prefer all the independents to go bankrupt and pick up the scraps. We have other companies like Marathon and Oventive who are opposed to it because they're so financially stressed, they cannot even cut production because they'll go bankrupt. So we're, 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 the action is really to prevent waste and loss of jobs um, and really to save our oil for national security. Yeah. And we really need Trump to do something or he's going to lose all the energy states in this election. Wow. So basically, if I'm hearing you right, Scott, I, it's almost I think it's sort of breaking news to my ears anyway, which is now it's not just Russia and Saudis against America. It is now the big super majors against the mid and small companies. Exactly. That's definitely what's going on. And we have no. Solutions. And how does it end? So we have no solutions. Um, what happens as you know, there's about 74 public independents. There's only going to be about 10 left at the end of 2021 that have decent balance sheets. The rest are become ghosts or zombies. I, I hate to compare them to Chesapeake because Doug Lawler has done a great job there. But uh, essentially, we're going to have about 65 public independents. They're going to have debt to cash flow or debt to EBITDA of about five to one. And you haven't asked me about consolidation. Consolidation won't happen because... Too many companies Can't have, have too much debt. That's right. I mean, we've already seen some some bad deals out there. Scott, we got to get you on again soon because what you're saying is really powerful stuff. I wish we had more time uh, saying there's maybe 10 public companies. I know you guys will be one of the ones that are left, by the way. Scott Sheffield, thank you very much for joining us. Thank and you, the Brian. straight talk we needed to hear. You be well.